Bamboo Lab are relatively new to the 3D printing market but have made waves with their beginner friendly yet feature rich lineup, aimed especially for those who are not tech savvy. With several models in their now very solid selection, in this series of videos we'll be delving into a super affordable, refined and out of the box multicolour capable unit, the Bamboo Lab A1. The Bamboo Lab A1 Combo is perhaps the best example of a modern, affordable 3D printer out there right now, with specs that are on par with the current crop of the best, fast 3D printers currently available. A sleek, refined and polished unit that requires very little technical skill to set up and start printing, and that's where the magic is here, the sheer simplicity throughout use. And it all starts with the unboxing experience, seriously it's like a work of art. And once you get into the shipping box, you'll be presented with everything placed neatly and carefully within several foam lined layers. So we have two layers that include all accessories, as well as the A1 AMS Lite multicolour unit, which provides the ability to print models using up to four different colours. But of course we'll want to get started with the actual A1 printing unit itself, again expertly wrapped and protected for whatever the shipping couriers will no doubt put the package through before it gets to you. The quality is also really impressive here, it feels solid, especially at this price point, no dangling cables or loose parts to be seen. And that's because the focus here is on making things as easy as possible for the complete beginner, and that starts from the initial setup. So starting with the base or Y axis carriage then, we notice no visible belts or pulleys, everything is self contained making it incredibly neat and tidy. While the instruction manual states the first job is to place the build plate on the bed, honestly I'd leave that till the very end. You want to keep the plate as clean as possible even from the oils on your fingers and it's not needed until the very end regardless. So we'll begin by freeing the Y carriage from its shipping state by removing four screws from the bottom using the really nice tools included with the kit. Each screw to be removed is circled in red making them easy to distinguish, and you'll notice this throughout the entire setup. The attention to details like this really show that there's been a fair degree of thought gone into not just the printer, but also to ensure it's as easy to set up as possible too. With that done, and the bed now free to slide to each side, so do take care from here on, place the main printer frame on a flat surface. And with the bed tilted with the screen side up, proceed to feed through the frame and seat down into position, so that the two indentations on either side of the bed line up with the frame itself. And with that, so within a few minutes of unboxing, we have what resembles a 3D printer already. It really is that easy. After removing all remaining packaging, including all the zip ties, We can proceed to marry the two parts together by pushing the bed all the way forward, now providing us space to unclip the Y axis cover by pulling upwards to release and then sliding away from the bed completely, revealing the belt and rail beneath. Next locate the correct screws, again attention to detail is great here since even the individual bags of screws are clearly labelled up, ensuring there's no mix up throughout the process. These can then be used to connect our two parts by screwing into every hole with a green coloured circle. Proceed to get all screws into position by the rail system, and not forgetting the two outer screws by the Z axis rails, and with all screws in place tighten down into position. You don't need to crank down too tight here, a nice snug fit is all that's needed. Before pushing the bed back to the rear, in order to reveal the final two green highlighted screw locations where we install another two screws. With that done, push the bed back to the front and reinstall the Y axis cover by sliding into place and pushing to snap back down. And with that we pretty much have the 3D printer constructed. Electronics next, so with the bed pushed all the way to the back again, Rotate and place the unit on the edge of your desk so it overhangs, and to be safe place some weight on the top end to ensure it doesn't tip over. We're now free to plug in this cable box into the right side of the bed carriage, just here. 
so place into position before pushing upwards so that the USB-C connector pushes up into its slot and secure by tightening the single pre-inserted screw. We have only three connectors to plug in here. Each is color coded, so we we'll proceed with the first two. While the third, located further down, routes through a side panel in the cable box and up to its respective port, again color coded for ease. The printer can now be placed back on its base and the control screen twists out into position. The final step is to install this small contraption, the purge wiper. This slides into the respective slot found at the end of the X axis and is secured with a single screw, again clearly labelled to avoid confusion, going upwards into the wiper assembly and securing it into position. And that's pretty much it. Bamboo Lab A1 construction complete. I'm assuming most will purchase the combo version of the printer with the multicolor AMS light unit, although if not, or if you intend to print with materials like TPU for instance, you receive a single spool holder. With the support shaft screwed into the main body of the spool holder, simply align with the top crossbeam of the frame with the Bamboo Lab logo facing forwards and snap into position. With that done, uncover the integrated camera, and we're done. The entire process takes no technical skill whatsoever. It really is super easy. Saying that, although the A1 is a good printer on its own, it's the AMS light system that comes with the combo package that elevates this to a near perfect product. Since it's this that lets you print different colors on the A1 by feeding up to four different color filaments directly to the printer without any user intervention at all. The build and connection process is as simple as building the printer, so that's precisely what we'll do next. Construction starts with the AMS light stand then, upon which the main body slots down into place, taking care to ensure the cable end is facing towards the highest point of the stand and securing it into place with the clearly labelled screws, two on either side. Again, no need to crank down super tight here, a nice snug fit is all that's needed. We can then attach the four rotary spool holders by matching the colours up to their respective slots and push fitting into place. And that's pretty much it. The AMS light assembly is complete. It really is that simple. While the AMS light is designed to sit on the right side of the printer, you're free to place it anywhere to be fair, as long as the main power and control cable can reach the rear of the machine. But even then, longer cables and extensions are available online should the need arise, as well as a printable mount for attaching to the top of the printer's frame too. Nevertheless, we can now proceed to push fit each of the bundled PTFE tubes into the top of the unit, and then across onto the top of the printer's extruder assembly. Finally, the extruder's main cable can be inserted into the free slot within the cable organizer to keep it completely out of the way. And with that, we're done with the complete A1 combo hardware setup. With the hardware ready to go, we're ready to power up and calibrate the printer so it's ready for its first print, as well as install the Bamboo Lab slicer software on a computer. Again, all relatively simple and straightforward. So join me in the next video where we'll go through the entire process.